Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. In a previous video, I shared installation tips for setting up your Starlink dish and hinted at a few network design issues. In this video, I'll show you a variety of options for connecting Starlink into existing home networks, including how to overcome some of the current limitations. Let's get into it. The default situation for Starlink is a simple wireless network like this. You use the Starlink app on your phone to name your network and define password access. This is extremely easy to set up and you simply attach your computers and TVs and whatever devices you have to that wireless network. If this is all you need, you'll be done in a few minutes and you can stop watching this video. But if you're going to do that, please take the time to subscribe and give me a like down below. A slightly more sophisticated network might integrate the Starlink router into an existing wired Ethernet network like this. Again, very simple to set up if you already have Cat5 or 6 connections in your home. You simply use the AUX port on the Starlink router to connect into your network with a simple Ethernet switch like this one. Essentially, the switch acts more or less like a splitter with the Starlink box taking care of addressing and routing. Wireless devices can also be connected to the Starlink wireless network, just like in the previous setup. Now, a slightly more complicated option is this one. You would use this design if you've already invested in your own fancy router and wireless access ports and want to continue to take advantage of them. A couple of things to be aware of. Firstly, the Starlink router cannot be put into bridged mode. In fact, it has no administrator interface at all, at least not at the time of this video. So you need to take it completely out of the network to avoid what's called a double NAT situation with two back-to-back -back routers. Now, the good news is, is that you can simply connect the white side of your Starlink power unit directly into the WAN port on your router, and it works. Set your own router's WAN port to connection type DHCP, and it will be provided an IP address from Starlink. The rest of your network can remain exactly as is, including access to whatever wireless network you've set up. Just go to town. By the way, your Starlink router is out of the loop in this configuration, but you definitely want to hang on to it for troubleshooting should that ever be required one day. Okay, so everything seems to work great. So what was I whining about security cameras for in the, in the last video? Well, here's why. In order to remotely access a device like a security camera that is behind a router, you need to somehow securely punch a hole through the router's firewall. There's at least four ways to do this, and well, there's probably others as well. First, you can do what I call reach in to the internal device from outside the firewall. And this is what I do now. And I'll provide you more details on how I do this in a second. The second approach is what I call push out, which would involve your internal device actively pushing the data, such as the video feed, out to an external server where you could then access it. That server could be your own or a cloud-based server. Third, you could define a VPN or virtual private network that traverses the firewall with both the internal device and external devices connected to that VPN. And finally, you could use IPv6 with public IP addresses assigned to the internal devices. Now, by the way, Starlink's IPv6 support seems a little dodgy right now, so I'm not sure if that would actually work. For my current setup, I have the first scheme in place. So let me talk about how that is done. And I'll show you my physical devices and what settings I have in place on my router. So to set up a reach in configuration, you need to satisfy three requirements. First, you need to have an unchanging host address for your network. So if and when your IP address changes, you can still find it. In my case, I use a service from noip.org to meet that dynamic DNS requirement. Secondly, you need to be able to do what is called port forwarding on your router. 
This basically punches a secure hole through your firewall from the outside to a specific IP address on your private local area network. Thirdly, you need that device to have a fixed IP address on your local network. So you need to do a DHCP reservation. Here's my old cottage network with a DSL internet connection from Bell Canada. I was able to set the Bell modem to bridge mode to avoid that double NAT problem that I mentioned. So the modem just basically passes the ethernet straight to my own router, which is a Unify security gateway, by the way. I've set up the port forwarding and DHCP reservations on that router. And as you can see, I have a wired network for higher speed access between the devices on the network and my own Wi-Fi access ports to provide good wireless connectivity across the property. My son Max gets full credit for setting this up. But here are the big Starlink networking problems. The Starlink router has no administrative portal, so you can't put the Starlink router into bridge mode. And more importantly, Starlink itself does not currently support port forwarding. And that's a killer. So for my current setup, I'm hosed. What I've done to work around this limitation is this. Basically retain Bell Canada for my remote security camera access and use Starlink for a fast internet connection. Fortunately, my Unify security gateway router has two input WAN ports to allow this to be done. I have my old Bell modem plugged into WAN 1 because for some, some strange reason, only WAN 1 supports port forwarding. And the Starlink connection itself is plugged directly into WAN 2 with the Starlink router set aside. The router allows me to set a load balance between the two WAN ports with Starlink taking 99% of the load and Bell providing 1%. I have my port forwarding defined for WAN 1 to support the remote security camera setup and existing no IP dynamic DNS continues to work perfectly. If and when Starlink supports port forwarding, I can drop the Bell internet connection. Here's the physical setup. This is the Unify security gateway with WAN 1 here connected to my Bell modem. and WAN2 connected to my Starlink PoE power device down here. The LAN connection connects to this Ethernet switch over here, which connects to the devices in the rest of the house. On the Unify router, here's how to set things up. First go to Settings, then Network, and create a second network. In my case, I've called it WAN2 Starlink. Set up the connection type to DHCP. Set the load balance to 99% and hit save. You also need to go to devices to ensure that WAN2 is actually enabled, since by default it's not. Click on devices, select the router, then ports, and configure the port to be enabled. I won't bore you with the details, but on the Unify setup, the DHCP reservations are done on the client screen and port forwarding on the routing and forwarding screen. It's a little bit tricky to find these various settings, but that's all there is to it. I hope you've found this video helpful for integrating Starlink into your home network. If so, give me a like and drop a comment down below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And don't forget, to hit that bell for notifications of my future videos. Thanks for watching.